Morning guys, I'm Dave Canterbury with the Pathfinder School. You know, we talk about, in the five tool rule, we talked about carrying an awl so that you could drill certain types of holes. And we drilled some holes in our Seneca pack frame that we made with our awl. But if you're going to drill bigger diameter holes for pinning things together, for pegging things, or whether you're going to tap trees and things like that, you're going to want a larger diameter hole than that awl is going to be capable of making very easily. So the answer to that has always been the auger bit. And an auger bit basically just looks like this. It's a bit that's made for boring into wood. You can get them in lots and lots of different sizes and shapes. Here are some brand new ones that I purchased that have never been used. Still in the box, genuine original Irwins. And I bought three of these in the box for $5. So they're fairly cheap if you go to the right place to find the auger bits. Now, there are a couple different ways you can employ these auger bits. The first one is to use what's called a bit and brace. And the brace is this and the bit is the auger. And this has a chucking device on the front of it and some of them are ratcheting or reversible and some of them are not. This one is just a standard socket that tightens down in a chuck. It's pretty small, pretty lightweight. You could carry this in your kit. If you had conveyance it wouldn't be a big deal. The other answer that I've seen to this is what's called a scotch eye or ring eye auger and they were used quite a bit during timber framing days and it is an auger bit that has a steel ring welded to it so that you can put a cross T through it and use it as a T handle type auger. What I was looking for was an answer because number one the scotch eyed augers are a little difficult to find and when you do find them especially if they're handmade by someone they're very expensive. I've seen them sell on eBay for as much as $40 for a single auger bit. And I just told you, like I said, I bought all three of these for five bucks. So what's the answer to that? How can we make something to take to the woods that will adapt to these augers and work well for us? Well, I came up with this. This is a T-pipe made of black iron that is three-quarter inch inlet here, half inch inlet here, I took another reducing adapter that went from half inch to quarter inch and put it in here. And now we're going to heat this up in the forge and we're going to pound it over the top of an auger bit to form it to a square from around so that all of these auger bits will then fit inside this single adapter. It doesn't matter what size auger bit I have or what brand it is, it's going to fit in there. Then all I have to do is cut the stick, slide it through the center of my T, and I have a portable and more versatile type scotch auger. Stay with me, we'll get this made. Okay, so while I'm firing the forge up here, let's talk about what we're going to use to make this with. We've got two pieces of metal here. One of them is a piece of black iron, three quarters of an inch here, and it tees into a half an inch. Now I have a steel adapter that screws into the half inch side that reduces down to about a quarter of an inch and that's going to be my adapter end. So I'm going to put this in a vise and screw it down tight and then I'm going to heat this whole thing up in my forge. Okay, so I have an auger bit right here pitched in a vise. And my plan is just to remove this piece of metal when it gets hot enough with that sleeve in it and pound it down over the top of this auger to forge it. Okay, so we've got the bottom of this thing bright orange. And I really don't want the top of it too hot because I don't want it bending. What I want to bend is the bottom. So now I'm going to put this on top of our auger and pound it down on there to form it around the auger bit and then we're going to cool it down. Try to get that back on there exactly the way we had it the first time. Like that. Oh yeah. We don't have the black iron heated up as hot as we have the bottom because we just wanted to form a square in there. You can see her down there in the quench bucket, bubbling up.
get her cooled down, wiped down, and we'll see what we got. Folks, I appreciate you joining me out here today for a quick video how-to on how to make an adapter to create a scotch eye to auger. And I think that this is a very, very cheap, simplistic project. If you don't have a forge, you may be able to get this hot enough in a fire, but you would definitely have to have air to it. If you had a torch, you might be able to get it hot enough with map gas. I doubt propane would get it hot enough unless you had an air-driven propane forge. But it's not a difficult project that anybody can do. And it's very inexpensive for what it's going to do for you. And it's very versatile. I thank you for watching this video. I thank you for everything you do for our school, for our family, and for our business, for all of our sponsors, instructors, affiliates, and friends. I'll be back to another video, guys, as soon as I can. Thanks.